We'll come on to Wales in a minute, but Eddie Jones's Wallaby side. Goody, do you want to start on this, mate? Holy smokes. Go get him, Goody. (laughs) Go get him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I did not want to say I told you so, but I told you so. Past his sell-by date, Tick said it months ago. Runs a toxic environment, supposedly, and it's coming out. Um, yeah, listen, a penny for the thoughts now of Dave Rennie, Quay Cooper, Michael Hooper, Brad Davis, a lot of other coaches that have worked for him. Um, you know, he knows Eddie's way and that's the only way he knows. And okay, when you're the boss, that's what you do. But when you've been such a failure as he has since he took over Australia and he's coming out and sticking it to people, journos, come on the journey, mate. But I'm not talking to you, mate. You don't know anything about rugby, mate. And there's a meme going around, isn't there, that Jim, you've put on social media uh, that is just so spot on uh, around Eddie Jones. Listen, he's, you know, people are like, oh, you've got a personal vendetta. He's treated a lot of people very badly over the last however many years. Uh, and so there's a lot of people that have an axe to grind because of how he has treated people. Uh, some good friends of mine have been, you know, very badly treated by him. Um, a supposed bullying culture and all that stuff. Now, because of how he conducts his business, I don't feel sorry for him at all. You know, he, and it did look, you know, he's got his head in his hands. His press conference was awkward. The whole thing about Japan and that supposed interview, you know, the timing of that has come out. But the bottom line is he's played eight, won one. And everyone, including Jim Hamilton, a load of people were saying, oh, England shouldn't have sacked him because what about his World Cup record? Well, how about his World Cup record now, ladies and gentlemen? He's the first Australian coach to never make the knockouts. And he led Australia to their biggest ever defeat at a World Cup. Um, And he's just, his time's up. He's got to go. And I did a column on it for Rugby Pass. If he loses the game, I think he's in an untenable position now. You look at the body language. I know there were tears from a lot of the Aussies after the game because they realised the severity of what had happened, not just the loss and the manner of the loss, but the fact that they're barring a miracle out of the competition now. Um, It's a product of an Eddie Jones culture that is the Eddie Jones show. It's driven by him uh, and how he treats people. There, There wasn't enough spite or there wasn't enough desire in that jersey. And Sonny Bill said it, didn't he, about how would you follow someone into battle? Um, and, and let them lead you. Well, I can tell you now, having knowledge on the inside of people that are in the camp and have been in the camp and all that stuff and how he's handled his business over there doesn't surprise me. And I, I did say that it would be a shambles under Eddie, and it is a shambles. You know, there are bigger issues in Australian rugby than just the Wallabies team, but he has taken them backwards at a rate of knots, and it's the first Australian team probably to never make the knockouts. Um, and Anyone else is getting sacked. Australia needs to make a big decision. You you can't leave him in charge of coaching the Aussies anymore. If you keep him in the environment, and he's talking about strike your mate, we've got to board him up, we've got to sort Australian rugby. Let him do off-field stuff if you're going to keep him in the environment. But one tip of the slipper in all this, and we've given him some stick on here because he's been asleep. Bill Sweeney knows what he's doing, doesn't he, lads? You know, off you go, Eddie. Sacking Eddie. Gardening leave? Nah. Now, you go and ruin the Aussies, mate, because we know how bad you are. And off he goes. And um, So, Bill Sweeney's decision now to let him go and work for the Aussies and not go on gardening leave. He's a very wise man, Bill, so I take back a lot of what I've said. He's awake, Bill, and he knows what he's talking about. But, um, yeah, Eddie's, mate, his his time's up for me. Um, Anyone else in the world gets sacked. Uh, And I hope that the Aussies were wise enough when they did the contract to have a, a clause in there around minimum criteria of, you know, quarterfinals of World Cup whatever but I can't have seen Eddie Jones signing that in a contract well you want me mate yeah take that out mate yeah come on the journey well the journey has gone backwards Eddie so he could be going to Japan still being paid by England still being paid by Australia (laughs) and then being paid by Japan you some might say some might say an an absolute genius but look I'm with you now I've given him the full benefit of the doubt and it's unravelling now and poor David Parecki in the press conference after, 
when all the Japan yeah. stuff's getting brought up and Eddie's about to walk out of the press conference, like absolute tumbleweeds. The one the week before, I found quite funny. I found that one quite uncomfortable. And you know what? He's gone all in. He's had all his chips for this game against Wales. He's banged them on the table. He's put his nuts on there. Whatever hair he had left, he's put that in there and said, take it all because we're beating Wales. That's what he said. We are yeah. not losing this game. And his position now has become untenable, like you said. And it's hard yeah. to say that because, you, you, look, this is another human being, right? It's his job, it's his livelihood, albeit he's probably a multimillionaire. Life's different now. The game's different now. You look at the very best teams in the world and the environments that they're in. Look at Andy Farrell. Look at the smart... And it's easy saying that because they're the, the number one team in the world. Look at Rassi Erasmus the way that he treats his players, the way that he treats his staff. No one leaves. Look at Scott Robertson with the Crusaders, like what he's built there, that yeah. dynasty that he's built there. Spent some time with Ron Nogara last week as well. Like He was speaking about the people first and having to develop in that role. Mate, he's a dinosaur. We've worked with coaches like that before and that old school, and there's a bullying mentality. That bullying mentality and that toxic environment has now come back to bite him. So I can't see I mean, I do wonder, Hamish McLennan, who's heading up Rugby Australia, is going to have to make a, a massive decision. Because really, how do you move Eddie Jones upstairs to then become the boss of the boss or to work out the structures? Is it, let, yeah. Excuse the French. He's fucked it, unfortunately. Yeah. He's gone all in. I can't see him there. And you know what? The game against Portugal looking at our good Portugal. What are you saying, Goody? Are you saying that Portugal are beating Australia? That's a big <laughs> shout. Like, I, I bet that. you would love it. But I, I wouldn't want that. it. We need Australia yeah. to be good. Like, as in, as a... I go on holiday to Portugal, mate. I yeah, want Portugal to I'm, win. I'm, I'm half Portuguese yeah, now. Well, I'm sure you are. Well, the amount of time I spent there. Your gut bio is. Um, what I will say, and I've got to disagree, I, I like George Gregan on Punditry, uh, on ITV. A lot of time for him uh, for what he achieved as a bloke and all this stuff. And he... Was a little bit biased because he said, "Look, I know the man very well, and you know he'll be hurting and all that stuff." So, but he was like, "Who else is there?" I'm going to throw a name into the mix on who, what Australia should do. You've got to get rid of Eddie Jones. Can I guess first, and then and you tell me if I'm right? Justin yeah. Harrison. Nope. <laughs> How good? Nope. How good? Jamie Joseph. Nope. Nope. We've had him on the podcast, ladies Andy and gentlemen. Friend. Yes, that'd be good. Now. Friendy has he's a great bloke, he's a brilliant coach, he's got experience of Australia, he's Australian, he has learned a hell of a lot Irish. from Connacht, done a yeah. bloody good job, uh, knows the detail of what works That's for Ireland. That's a great shout. Good. I, don't, I don't think there's a better man. Aussies like Aussies, right? They didn't really take to Dave Rennie that well. Um, you know, for me, I'm thinking, go and get Friendy. He's on his camper van in France somewhere. Get him now. That's Kick Eddie out show. tomorrow. That's great show, Andrew. And go and get Andy Friend because like, his detail and his understanding and the way, what he did at Connacht and his overall knowledge of the world of rugby and what he can take back in IP from Ireland to Australia to improve them as a whole country, uh, you know, obviously a, a national team, but structures in place. I think he's an ideal guy for Australia. So Andy Friend, I can be your agent. We'll get Eddie sacked. Phil War, I used to play against him. We're going to have a chat and we're in. Six year deal. He could be the Wallabies version of Warren Gatlin. I mean, how has he turned a team around that finished fifth in the Six Nations into a team that's first into the knockout stages of a World Cup? So they listen to Jim Hamilton and use Jim's words. They can't. That's They've heard it all before. Doesn't matter what I say, <laughs> as we obviously we know that. But again, what, they were unbelievable. And Wales, as oh, yeah. in the frightening thing for everyone else, is not just because it was Australia and they were poor, was the way in which they played. It looked like the Wales of old. Physical, yeah. direct, simple, unflustered by bigger going off, Anscombe coming on. Ask, Anscombe looked back to his best, which he hasn't been. Mate, so happy Amazing. for him. So happy. After everything he's been through, what a lovely bloke. But hell and back with injuries. And then to perform like that, when that is the biggest question mark, Dan Bigger going off out of this world. That was the thing. And you're right, because Dan Bigger goes off, all the eggs in his basket. Sam Costello isn't quite ready. Anscombe, his legs are gone after his injury. That's massive for them because now they have got yeah. the choice, haven't they, of how they want to play, bringing in other players. George North, I thought he was done. I said five years ago, I thought he yeah. was done. Did he get man of the match in the end? Yeah. I didn't see the after 
Anscombe, Anscombe did, did he? Anscombe. Well, that's what I mean. So you've yeah. got the 10, 12, 13, whether or not it's bigger. Anscombe, Gareth Davis, shredded to the bone, 4% body fat percentage, yeah. was unbelievable. Tail the arms and the triceps. But this is what I mean, Goody, as in, like, going into a World Cup, whether or not they've been back to see Poland again and they're waterboarding each other. It, it, they went turkey. They? they got their heads the t- and their head and teeth and t- well, well, <laughs> Lewis Rees Abbott <laughs> definitely <laughs> did. My goodness me. Zoo! What are you doing, you absolute <laughs> slipper? Uh, anyway, he's a, uh, he's a fan of Ronaldo. But Wales, just complete identity. Chatting to Ashley, I don't know if he mentioned it to you, Goody, but... I was saying, who do you want to avoid in the quarterfinal? Like, thinking he'll say, Fiji. He was like, Wales. I said, really? And he yeah. said, like, the worry for England is that physicality with Wales. I thought they looked brilliant. The back row, Jack Morgan, again, that 50-22, which uh, is the yeah, obvious, but that's the obvious, right? It's the 50-22, but it's not that. It's the physicality. Yeah. It's his carrying. Yeah. It's his collisions. Yeah. Uh, the makeup with uh, Aaron Wainwright in the back row. Even though Tolupe Falatau yeah. is a lot older now and isn't the player there's a bit of Billy Van Apola around it having played that many games but the balance of that back row there you go exactly so the most carries you've got two young lads in there as well the line out was a little bit better still a little bit of a problem for them the scrum absolutely decimated the Australian scrum but it's the confidence that Wales now have because they're now into that quarter final and we know any Warren Gatland team in a World Cup we saw keep going back to four years ago they didn't beat South Africa but they love a semi the Wales do, yeah. and they. Sorry. I was so impressed. And you know what? I am genuinely really, really happy for them. What I will say about Jack Morgan, just make him Lions captain, boys. There's your outside bet. Jack Morgan, Long way. Lions so captain, much to happen. two years. So time. much to happen. Finn's going to be Lions captain anyway. <laughs> How far can they go in the tournament? Uh, semis. Uh, so obviously, that it's looking like they're going to play Argentina in the quarters now and on the form they're on the trajectory they're on um, you know from and it started with that first summer test against England at Cardiff and I'm like oh, mate Wales they're going to struggle they got better throughout the summer um, and then obviously they've started the World Cup a bit of luck against Fiji in the end but that has grown in confidence Portugal's a bit ropey at times but pulled themselves through they're just getting better on better week on week uh, and that performance it's probably one of their best ever performances especially at a world cup um to dispatch the aussies in that manner um it's just you know they won't get too carried away with themselves and ahead of themselves in terms of where they can go but you're now probably playing argentina in a quarter final which then leads you on to a semi-final against ireland who knows? Could you, ima- could you imagine? Knows? We're talking about the enormity. Yeah, thanks, Andy Rogers, Come on. Going, what, about, what about the All Blacks? What, what about the All Blacks? Riding off the All Blacks. This is me saying it, the enormity of what it would be for Ireland, the country, everything yeah. that Wales have gone through. And you talk about someone galvanising a nation. Warren Gatlin comes in. Wales as a rugby nation, they've been on their back, not even on their knees, they've been on their back. You think about everything that's going on with the club games, the money in the game, everything that's gone on behind the scenes. Yeah. And it just shows you the enormity of a World Cup and how that can galvanise a nation, how that can change the mindset of a team. Like, we're talking about a team now that is literally the click of a finger, like Goody said, that performance against Portugal stumbled through. Some absolute idiot on a, on a podcast, whoever he is, he, he should never do a podcast again, says he thinks that Georgia will beat them. Like, that's going to be the biggest upset <laughs> in the Rugby World Cup. But it shows you, as in, you get the environment yeah. right and you get them one win and you come through adversity, which they did against Fiji. It can change everything. Yeah. Big shout out to Alex King as well. Doing a lot of a job from all accounts and Mike Forshaw. Mm. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.